Hi, happy Saturday. How's everyone? I'm going to wait till a few more people arrive. Then we're going to start going through because this one has been highly requested because they couldn't find the other one or got taken down or something like that. I don't know, but I'm back. I'm drinking coffee and pink lemonade. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, everyone. Okay, so since this is a live, um, I'm going to tell you guys I'm going to be speaking and I'm not going to be able to answer questions till the end. So save those questions till the end. Okay. Hey, how you doing? Uh, so I'm going to put my list up over all the chat. So I'm not going to be able to see anything y'all say until the end, until I ask. Okay. So you can still comment, but um, I won't be answering questions till the end. Okay, so let's go through the 48 laws of power, shall we? Um, and there is a book written by Robert Greene, if y'all want to check that out. But I use the same techniques, and I didn't even know I was using them. But now since we have a list of them, let's go through them, okay? So the first rule or the first law is never outshine the master. And this is when I speak about like in relationships or on dates, never compete with the man. OK, if you want him to lead you and pay for things and, you know, um, secure your lifestyle in some way, you can't outshine them. Okay, that's just it. I know a lot of uh, feminist women and ladies don't like that. But remember, this is a law of power. Okay, so if you want any type of power in a relationship, if you want a relationship and you want any type of power in the relationship, this is one of the laws. Okay, because a lot of these laws are strategic. They're not just straight up. You know, some of these laws are strategic. So if a real feminist, you know, wants to get ahead, she's going to have to use strategy. I'm not a feminist, but if they read these laws, they might understand women like us a little bit more. Okay. So never outshine the master. Don't compete with the person that you're trying to date. Okay. Never throw your career out there. Never talk about yourself too much. Let them talk about themselves. Let them shine. Okay. Uh, law number two, never put too much trust in friends. Learn how to use enemies. Okay. A lot of you ladies who are leveling up or, you know, taking better care of yourself, uh, who have had friends forever, who have you trusted with your life, and they, you know, now they're betraying you. Okay. That's why you never put too much trust in friends. Okay. Because they're disposable. So don't tell all your secrets and everything to people, because if you do, remember, they can turn on you in two seconds. If you put on some red lipstick, you just made an enemy. OK. <laughs> um, and for those of you who aren't subscribed to my channel, my channel normally helps women to meet men of, of, of means or to get men to um, take them seriously and to get um, dates or get their own husbands or whoever that they're dealing with to treat them, you know, as a priority. So if you've stumbled upon this video, now you know what my channel's about. Okay. So learn how to use enemies. Okay. You guys in the YouTube community, in any community, and at work, your coworkers, whoever enemy, whatever enemy presents themselves, learn how to use them to your advantage. Okay. Because they are your free promotion. They are your free um, advertisement. They are the person that puts so much attention and light and shines the spotlight on you. Use that spotlight real quick. Use it. Okay. Um, understand how to use enemies. Don't get upset. Don't get emotional about it. Use it to your advantage every time. Okay. Conceal your intentions. This is uh, law number three, to conceal your attention. I mean, intentions. Don't come straight up and say, look, I'm a gold digger. You're going to have to pay me A, B, C, and D. Or, look, I want to get married. I want to have five kids. I know we're only on date one, but 
this is what I want. Don't con don't conceal. I mean, it says do conceal your intentions. If you want all that, if you want five kids in marriage on your first date, you should be telling people, oh, I just want to have fun and I'm spontaneous. OK, that way their guard is down. They're like, oh, I can deal with this. Ooh, yes. She don't want she's not even talking about marriage. No, you know, she's not even talking about a serious relationship. No strings. That's how they fall for you, because they're letting their guard down. Around you as well. OK, so conceal your intentions. Law number four says always say less than necessary. And I, I talk about this a lot. Don't talk. Listen, get, get all the information that you need to get. And don't give them any that they can use against you. OK, law number five, so much depends on reputations. Defend it with your life. Exactly. If you have a reputation and someone is trying to tear it down in some type of way, you need to defend it. You need to step up. You need to also make sure that you stay classy with it. But don't let other people bring your reputation down if you can help it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for example, if someone's saying lies and spreading rumors about you, all you have to do is uh, basically prove them wrong by being exactly who you are and not even really bothering with trying to prove them wrong, but just shine as you are. And we're going to come across these laws later, but, and defend your ground. You know, it's like, I don't know who this person is, but obviously they want to be me or something, you know, psh, my reputation precedes me. I'm, I'm who I am, you know. Um, law number six, court attention all, at all costs. Okay, that means grab attention at all costs. It means when you walk in the room, you want every head to turn because that's power. Okay, and if you could use it in a good way. Like, you could be the ugliest thing or the beautiful, the most beautiful thing. But you want every head to turn. So you want that attention. So you walk in, in, in the place looking great and confident. That is going to automatically make people think you're powerful. And not powerful in like, oh, um, I'm a billionaire, but I'm powerful. Like, look at all the people that would love to approach me right now. Okay. Um, for ladies. And for men, it's like, oh, wow, look at all these people that are looking at me like I'm all this and that. You know, I, um, they must think I'm somebody, you know, um, law number seven, get others to do the work for you. Get others to do the work for you. But always take the credit. I know this sounds a little, sh a little shady, but it is one of the laws of power. So, you know, a lot of people ask, you know. Why do um, why don't you take care of certain things yourself? Why don't you do this yourself? Why aren't you more independent? You know, if people are trolling you online, why do why do you send? I don't really send people, but why do other people have to defend you? And it's not that they have to. Sometimes they just choose to because they like me as a person. Sometimes they want to. But you know, as far as me being in, um, independent or letting other people pay my bills or you know, you know, whatever. Why would I go out and secure an outside position, leave my house and do all that stuff when someone else offers to do it for me? I mean, that would be very dumb, right? Even though I do make money at home um, and I get to keep all of it, but it would be very stupid of me not to allow someone else to handle those things just for the sake of ego. Right. So that's extra power for me, like extra power because I have extra money that I can do whatever I choose to with because I'm not struggling trying to pay bills because someone else is doing it for me. OK. Or that's like if you work in an office and you can get your assistant to do some work for you and you can take credit for it because they work for you. Same thing. OK. So let other people do work for you. And as far as people commenting on my behalf, 
Thank you. I do appreciate you guys. Um, and I don't see you as um, working for me. I, I, I also see you as, you know, defending something you actually believe in, um, the things that I speak about. Um, and it's not me, but people have asked that question. Why do you, why do people defend you? I don't know, because they want to. I don't ask them to do that. And I defend people that I want to defend. So, okay. Law number... Eight, make other people come to you. Use bait if necessary. Yes. Make other people come to you. Use bait if necessary. Now, a lot of you guys wonder why um, I don't say to approach a man. Um, because you are more powerful if he approaches you. You hold the power. And not the power as in you know, being the most dominant, but being able to get what you want. Okay. Um, so for example, if you're out and about and you see someone staring at you, but they're not coming over, you know, you can kind of look them in the eye a little bit and let them know, like raise your eyebrow, let them know you see them admiring you. And if they want to come over, they're more than welcome. Expose your le like neck to them. Like that means come on over you can, I'm exposing myself to you, you know? So, but it's just your neck, but it's still body language. So if you can get them to come over, now you hold the power. Okay. Um, or if it's in business, you know, if you want to do business with someone, all you have to do is mention something that they might need or, or um, something like that. Off something free and have them come to you, you know, when asked, okay, the law number nine, sorry, sorry, guys, I skipped over. Um, I was about to skip over, but law number nine, when through your actions, never through argument. Mm -hmm. Arguing doesn't solve anything. It just brings more emotion out. But if you just do action, like if you prove what you're trying to do if you're if you've done what you're arguing about if it's already done and it, that's all there is to it you win <clears throat> people are gonna be like what are they talking about look at look at this you know um she's already got this i don't know why people are arguing but <clears throat> shut it down with some proof okay shut it down with the proof law number 10 infect infection avoid the unhappy and the unlucky ooh avoid broke people avoid unlucky people avoid people that are um negative energy avoid them don't even be around them because you're going to get sucked into their poverty to their negative energy and into their um ratchetness if anything so separate yourselves from those people. You know, you're not of that and you don't want to become of it. So don't even hang around it. Don't even listen. Like never listen to advice from anyone who you would not trade places with. And that's my number one thing, especially in power. If you wouldn't trade places with someone, don't take their advice on whatever they're trying to sell you. Because... If they could actually get out of their own, you know, hell hole, they would. They wouldn't even be sitting there in a hell hole, giving advice out of a hell hole on how to be A, B, C, and D. Or what's going to make you the, a better person. So you never take advice and you never hang around certain people or certain environments that are unhappy and unlucky because that will rub off on you. Okay. So that's why I always tell you guys, hurry up and get out of that environment. Hurry up and get from around them people, make some new friends, get into a new environment because they will grab you back in. They don't want you to escape baby. Because if you, when you escape, you become more powerful automatically. Your status goes up automatically. It doesn't even matter if you don't have enough money to do it and you but somebody paid for it, your status goes up like that and they're seen as less than crabs in the barrel. Yes. And you'll notice 
a lot of those people are going to be family and friends or people that look like you. Don't let them do it. Just keep it moving. All right. Next one. Oh, law 11. Learn to keep people dependent on you. Okay. In the relationships, there are certain things that men depend on women for all the time. You know, um, it could be emotional support. It could be uh, validation. It could be um, something physical. It could be anything, you know, but keep them dependent on what only you can offer. And that way you will always have them. You will always be able to request things from them. And you will always have that power in your hand. Okay. That's how you do it. Um, and for you guys who are just tuning in, I'm not answering questions right now until the end. Okay. So law 12, use selective honesty and generosity to disarm your victim. When I speak about the honesty sandwich, this is exactly what I'm speaking about. Selective honesty. That means don't tell them everything that's true. Mix it in with some fairy tales. Okay. Um, selective generosity. Okay. Don't be too giving. Only give little bits and when you think they deserve it, you know, and or when they might not deserve it, throw them a little bone. You know what I'm saying? Because then they don't know what to think of you. Don't They don't know if, where you're coming from. And they're just going to think, well, she must be honest if she's telling me this, you know, oh, she must be a genuine person if she's giving me this nice gift and I don't even deserve it. That's what you think. Okay. Um, let's talk about law number 13. When asking for help, appeal to the person's self-interest. Y'all know this, ladies. I keep telling y'all this. Never to their mercy or gratitude. Um, that's why I say when you are with someone or you know where their vulnerability is, you can tap into, like, say, if they were animal lovers, they lost their dog as a child, and say you need some money, you're not going to be able to get it by begging. But if your dog suddenly needs an operation and you know that they love dogs, oh, my dog's going to die. Oh. Unless I have this operation for him. How much is the operation? A thousand dollars. You know, so this is another way to get, you know, what you from people power. Um, so, so the self interest, if they're interested in sports, you know, and you need some money, it's like, oh, and I think my, you know, I think someone else used this, Mickey. Oh, my sons, you know, or my ne my nephews are um, about to start baseball and they need, you know, some uh, registration fees or whatever. If the person's really into sports, oh, they have to go. Oh, they got to go to baseball. Let me let me give you some money. You know, it worked for her. So appeal to their self-interest. Don't expect them to relate to yours because chances are they've probably not been in whatever sorrow situation you're trying to put yourself in. They might see you as, oh, well, you need to learn a lesson or, oh, well, you need to figure that out on your own or, you know, you can't get anywhere unless you um, climb out of that yourself. But if you appeal to their interests, because people automatically favor you when you like the same things or if they are an expert on such thing and you need help in that area. So focus on their interests, not yours. Okay. Um, pose as a friend, work as a spy. Ooh. Pose as a friend, work as a spy. This could work in the workplace, the corporate world or <clears throat> Hollywood or whatever. You know, pose as a friend, work as a spy, you know, because there's always someone else that's more powerful that can actually use your information and thus make you even more powerful. 
So if you know such person has said enemy, um, you could pose as a friend, get some info, and bring it back and get power over here. Mm -hmm. So never know. Mm -hmm. Um, or something. Shoot. Law number 15. Crush your enemies totally. Ooh, crush your enemies totally. Why? If you have an enemy or a hater or someone that does not like you and it's always messing with you, you need a way to crush them totally because if you don't crush them totally, they'll come back or others will see you as weak and Oh, you can't get rid of this thing. You can't you can't defeat your enemy. Wow. You know, you're not that powerful at all. So crush them totally. And when you crush someone totally, they won't ever see it coming. You know what I'm saying? They will never see it coming because they're not expecting it. That's another one of the laws. But um, when you crush them, make sure they're gone for good. OK, so if you have someone telling you this, this and that. Oh, you know, hating on you at work. Get them fired. Shoot. Bye, Alicia. By any means necessary. Okay. <laughs> Bye. I know it sounds bad, but it will get you what you need. It will get you the power that you need. I've been gotten plenty, plenty of people fired. <laughs> eh, eh, eh. Okay. Anyway. Next, law 16, use absence to increase respect and honor. Disappear. Y'all remember my video, disappear? If someone is not giving you what you want, if someone is not respecting you, disappear. Be gone. Let them miss you. Let them wonder where you are, what you're doing. Uh, if, if your boss is not appreciative of you and doesn't think you deserve a, a pay, take your vacation in the, at the busiest time or get sick and get you a fake doctor's note at the busiest time when they need you the most, disappear. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, the next law, let's go to law number 17. Keep others in suspended terror. Cultivate an air of unpredictability. Exactly. Y'all know I talk about this all the time. Never let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Don't argue with people. Just get quiet. Disappear. They don't know what you're planning. And when you also, you know, become unpredictable, like, Every day is not the same. Uh, you come home one day um, with cotton candy and a, a teddy bear and you're supposed to be at work. Dang, I went to the carnival instead, you know. Be unpredictable, you know. Don't always let them think that they know you. Okay, it, it, That's why a lot of relationships fail because the woman becomes so calm. I mean, the woman usually becomes so predictable and so do the men sometimes. The men sometimes become predictable and that's why stuff gets boring. Be unpredictable. Like, y'all remember those old uh, raps from the, from the early, no, the late 90s? Or was that early 2000s? Unpredictable, mystical. Be unpredictable. Um... Let's go to law number 18. Do not build fortresses. Do not build fortresses to protect yourself. Isolation is dangerous. Yes. If you don't let anyone in, you don't have any allies. If you don't open up to certain people, you don't have anyone to connect to you, to, to um, empathize with you, to help you, to build you. You don't have that. So if you keep rejecting everyone and keeping yourself isolated, you will never have any power because you're not around anybody to get any power. You won't even be seen as powerful at all because no one can relate to you. No one can give you the power, you know. Oh, that was Jamie Foxx's song. <laughs> so unpredictable. I remember that song. Okay. Um, 
I did see that comment though. <laughs> Let's go to law number 19. Know who you're dealing with. Do not offend the wrong person. Exactly. Know who you're dealing with. Do not offend the wrong person. And I say this um, because a lot of people don't do their research before they you know, go around talking trash or insulting people or just blabbing their mouth. They might not be insulting anyone, but they might be talking too much and not knowing that they're around someone who knows someone or something. And you might be giving information that's valuable to them, but detrimental to you or someone else. So when you get around a bunch of people, don't just start blabbing at them out. Find out who those people are, you know, because a lot of people are um, spies or they might not be spies, but they might know your enemies or they might know your family or they might know your wife or husband or girlfriend or whoever. So know who you're speaking to and around because you could baby. I mean, you can probably I was reading like and then saying the word I was reading, uh, but you could probably get in a lot of trouble like that and lose a lot. OK, so law number. What am I on? OK, 20. Do not commit to anyone. Now, do not commit to anyone means always leave an open door. This is why a lot of your exes are calling you and saying, you will always be the one I love, even though I'm married with somebody else or even though I'm with somebody else, you always be they're keeping that door open. And they're never committing to you, but they're still getting the benefits of a commitment. Um, this is why a lot of guys say, oh, well, I don't believe in marriage. I believe in a spiritual union and it's just a piece of paper. Um, they've never fully committed to you legally, but they're getting all the benefits of a commitment. So if you never do the same, they can't ever get something from you, okay? Um, that you're not willing to give on your own, but usually you ask for something in return. Um, I saw this meme the other day, and it said, some people say marriage is just a piece of paper, but so is that 20-year mortgage that you're about to sign unmarried. Okay. So think about that one. <laughs> All right, next. 21. Play a sucker to catch a sucker. Seem dumber than your mark. Now, a lot of a lot of women hate me for this. I don't know how to play dumb. It's in the 48 laws of power. You want something, you want something? Act dumb. They will tell you more than you need to know. You will get more than you asked for. And it will be easier than you think. So all the ladies, all the educated people that are talking trash, okay, 48 laws of power. Just because you didn't read the book and you and y'all seem so educated, but y'all can't keep a man or get one. Because your book knowledge is in the way. Y'all need to read this book. All right. <laughs> so, hi. All right, so let's go. Let's finish them, and then we'll talk, okay? The next law, 22, use the surrender tactic. Transform weakness into power. Let them think they've won. I surrender, I give up, you know, you're right, blah, 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 blah. Then they'll let down their guard. They won't look around. They're not. Then as soon as they think you're done and it's peaceful, you attack. Bam. Psh, out of nowhere. What? What happened? Or as far as in a relationship, let them think, oh, you know what? You're right. You know, I was rushing the relationship. Let's slow it down. Let's slow it down. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, let's slow it down and take this slowly, you know, um, blah, 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 blah. Then they're going to let their guard down. I'm like, OK, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then start telling you stuff again. Get back close with you. Um, you know, stop pulling away from you. 
And then you can kind of get some information or you can uh, make them become more dependent on you because now you're at this new level of thinking. And, oh, she's not trying to trap me and I can feel close to her again. And, you know, she's not talking about marriage all the time or children. So now I'm going to relax. And then once they let their guard down, they're going to have some type of uh, dependency on you without that fear of commitment along with it. They're going to become so dependent on you emotionally and physically that after a few months or a couple of more months, when you start to say, well, you know what? I think I changed my mind. I I really do want to get married. So I got to go. I'm going to go find someone who's ready. But now that they've, you know, up under you all the time like a puppy dog and they're not worried about you trying to marry them. They've getting gotten closer to you and, um, you know, been spending a lot of time with you. So because they've realized, okay, well, if I spend a lot of time with her, she's not going to expect to get married because we've already talked about this. So I could get comfortable. Once they get in that comfort zone, that's when you pull the rug. Oh, baby, I got to go now. Change my mind. Bye. (laughs) Wait. That's when they propose. Okay. Um, next. 23, concentrate your forces. If you want to accomplish something, don't have five projects going on at the same time. Don't have, um, if you are concentrating on one thing, don't have anything else in the way, you know, stay focused until you accomplish that one thing. Concentrate your, your forces, um, in one area, if that's what you truly want. Okay, law number 24, play the perfect courtier. Okay, play that perfect woman. Play that perfect employee. Play. Play means act. Don't I tell y'all to act? How you think Meghan Markle got in that position? Play the perfect courtier. Act. I am live right now, but I'm not answering questions till the end. Uh, My number one fan. Um, Law number 25, recreate yourself. I just did a video the other day. Reinvent yourself. You know, reinvent yourself. Make yourself always changing. Because when you can do that, you're powerful. You know, that costs money, that costs that that's that that has courage, that has creativity, that has lots of qualities to it. And a lot of people are stuck in ruts and they see that you can change or that you can become this or that, you know, it gives you a little bit more respect, a little bit more power, a little bit more influence, and a little bit more um, you know, you can more people can relate to you. Also, if you're not who you want to be because you're and you're not getting any power, recreate yourself so that people will respect you. You see what they respect, turn into that. You see what men respond to, like we're doing in the level up group, turn into that. If you can't keep a man, it might not be for any other reason than your look, you know? So recreate yourself. That is one of the reasons I started Level Up. That's not what the group is called, but that's what the process is called. So that's one of the reasons that I created that, because you must change to gain more power. Okay, 26, Law 26, keep your hands clean. Don't get them dirty. Let other people do the dirty work for you. Don't get into a bunch of trouble. You know, keep your hands clean. That way it can't come back to bite you. And even if it does, keep your hands clean of any other doings that are maybe more recent, you know, cover your tracks, you know, keep your hands clean. Don't get sucked into doing dirty things um, because people can use it against you. Okay. Um, 27, law 27, play on people's need to believe to create a cult-like following. Okay. This is if you are some type of 
uh, in a leader position, in a leadership position, okay? Or if a lot of people follow you. If they follow you, then they need to all have the same values. And you can incorporate those values in um, your everyday speaking, how you dress, how you live, in order to get people to kind of follow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and most people believe in, you know, doing good and some people don't, but if you can get a group of people to believe a certain thing, they will follow you and give you that backup. Okay. Um, even if the thing is true, it doesn't really matter, but you need to play on their need to believe in something, you know, okay. Law 28. Interaction with boldness. If you're going to do something, come hard. Remember I say come hard or go home? You, If you're going to do something, go big. Okay? If you're going to wear red lipstick, don't don't wear red. Um, I mean, if you're going to wear red lipstick, don't wear red lipstick you can't hardly see because it's almost pink. Put on a dark red. Go get that Fenty. Are you going to put on makeup? Don't put on makeup that I can't barely see. You know? <laughs> if you're going to, you know, if you're going to get your hair done, don't come home looking the same as when you left. Do something different. You know, go for it. <laughs> All right. Let's keep going. Law 29, plan all the way to the end. Yes. When you go, oh, thank, hold on. Someone gave me a, I didn't even see that. Hold on, I got to thank her. Thank you, Layla Love. Love you, Shira. You are my mentor in my, in your head. We came so much better with your guidance and wisdom. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I have the, my notes over the chat, so I didn't see it till I, Till just now. So thank you. Um, okay, law 29. I just said that plan all the way to the end. Yes. So when you go in into in anything, make sure you have already devised your plan. Okay, but don't tell people about it. But that means you have goals. That means you have strategy. That means you know what to do. That means you have backup plans. That means you see the end game in mind. So when you go into something, there is no hope. There is no wishing. There is no what if. There are strategic plans in place to create what you want. There are specific plans in place to get this person to do this. And if this doesn't work, try this, okay, until it works. You don't move on until it works. And then you move on to the second goal. This is what I teach in Level Up. Y'all got to have goals, Y'all enter into relationships or, you know, dating, you need to have goals. And I'm not saying personal goals. I mean, goals for that particular person in game for that particular person. Do you, do you want to marry him? Do you just want his money or do you just want, um, you know, him to buy you some shoes and then you're going to ghost him? I don't know. Whatever your plan is, that's what it is. You know, even if you're a man, because I know a lot of guys watch this channel, even if you're a man, men already have this. When they meet a woman, they already know what she's for. Okay. Because um, if she falls into a certain category, the end game is a certain category. You know, if he doesn't see you as wife or girlfriend material, you're hit it and quit it. And his goal is to get that. Uh, if he sees you as girlfriend material, his goal is to take you out and press you and get you to commit. If he sees you as wifey, his goal is to impress you, make you his girlfriend, um, then make you his wife. So you have to understand, and men come on to women very different depending on their goals and their end game and their plan. So we teach that in the Level Up group too. Um, let's go down to law number 30. Make your accomplishments seem effortless. Yes, I did all this by myself. Oh, yes, this was easy to get out, you know, even though it might have been harder than you let it on to be. 
if it looks easy to other people, it makes you seem even that much more powerful, right? So like when someone says, oh, you look so beautiful today, it's like, be like Beyonce, I woke up like this. I woke up like this. And <laughs> it's like, oh, thank you. I just, this old thing, you know how women say this old thing? Um, at work, you know, oh, you did a great job on the, this project and da, 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 da. Oh, well, it was my pleasure. I really had a good time working on it. And, you know, it wasn't that much of an issue. Now they're going to give you something bigger that pays more because they see you can handle it with ease. Then you get power. Then you climb the corporate ladder if that's what you want to do. OK, but you always you can't be like, oh, yeah, I was up all night working on that. I barely made it. They're going to be like, OK, well, I was going to give you a bigger project, but I don't think you can handle it. You know, so. Thank you. Then, they're, you know, so make sure you don't. Stress out how hard something was. Da, 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 you know what I mean? Make make stuff look easy. Um, right? Make stuff look easy. Okay, law number 31. Control the options. Get others to play with the cards you deal. So controlling the options getting others to play with the cards you deal. So only give certain choices. Like don't let people have every choice in the world. Give them certain choices. And you can be like, okay, well, you know, I either really want, you know, this type of relationship or this type of relationship. So give them this option or this option, but either one is good for you. You know, um, don't give, People too many options. Oh, what well, do you want to go out? Yes, but I can only go out on this night or this night, and I can only, you know, do this, this, and that. Um, or let's say for in the workplace. Um, well, are you gonna be available on weekends? Um, and you know, some jobs require that. Um, well, I'm only gonna be available between the hours of and give them the hours that you're comfortable with. That way they don't call you all times and inconvenience you and stuff. You know what I mean? So it, you're <laughs> at least you're answering and you're um, giving them your conditions, basically. Or if someone says, well, what are you looking for in a relationship? Well, I'm either looking to have a lot of fun and have, you know, adventure, or I'm kind of looking for, you know, someone who really is genuine. So they only got two options, okay? Um, two options how to act. Okay. Law number 32, play to people's fantasies. I, I teach this a lot. That's why you let them talk and ask them certain questions so you know how to act. Okay. Um, playing to people's fantasies will get you on the top of the list if you're if they're dating several people at the same time. If you are their fairy tale, their fantasy, or whatever, they're always gonna put you first because you're their secret desire, you're their secret um maybe that no one else knows about could be something that's looked down upon or whatever. But since that's what they admire and value, you're always going to be number one. So play into someone's fantasies. And just like how men do, like a lot of women who've gotten ghosted, men have played into, oh, you're the wife type. Uh, you know, I really like you. I can see us together. I would love to live in this place and that place. I always wanted three kids. You know, they play into a woman's fantasy. That's what we call pillow talk. And then when the when the woman gives them, you know, that whatever next level uh, step in the relationship, then they're gone. They're out. They're like, but I thought you said you loved me and we were going to get married and you wanted to move here and have three kids. You're going to be like, I changed my mind. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> OK, so play into people's face <laughs> to get what you want. Um I see TMI in the uh, comments, y'all. TMI, TMI. All right. 
law number 33, discover each man's thumb screw. Um, thumb screw? The heck? So this could be like discovering someone's weakness, their whatever catches them, whatever gets them to pay attention. And you can you can use that to get interest. OK, so, for example, if they if they love travel or a certain type of alcohol or bourbon, you know, you could say, oh, you know. I have, I have this um, rare, you know, sample of bourbon if you want it, if you wanted it, you know, or um, like if you're working, your boss, you know, he collects certain things and you want that raise. You're like, oh, I have, a, I have this sample of bourbon that someone gave me and it's from such and such faraway place and or it's from this rare collection or it's old or whatever. Um, and I, I don't know what to do with it. And it's just sitting there getting dusty. So I would like you to have it, you know, buying or if they're if. Um, hey. <laughs> OK, so no, law number 34, be royal in your own fashion. Act like a king or, or a queen to be treated like one. OK, now a lot of ladies don't like me for this either. She thinks she all that. She thinks she's the queen of the world. The goddess this and the goddess that. Why does she have to act like that? Because it's powerful. And if you knew how powerful it was, you'd do it too. Okay. Y'all need to read more. Y'all need to read. Read other books besides the whole tippery. Okay. <laughs> Read other books that want to help you instead of make you sound helpless or like victims, you know? Okay. Law. Men do it all the time. Shoot. Even broke people do it. Shoot. <laughs> so law number 35, master the art of timing. OK, if you're trying to do something, you don't you want to wait for the right exact moment. You don't do it after somebody, you know, just ha uh, went to a funeral. No, you don't ask them for a raise right after they come back from their mom's funeral. You don't you know, you don't ask somebody for money right after, you know, they've been audited by the IRS. <laughs> OK, wait for the perfect time to where it almost seems like synchronicity or you know they got it or you know they're going to say yes okay um some people are just not even thinking half the time they just, oh, let me ask you. you know and that's why they get told no um 36 law 36 disdain things you cannot have ignoring them is the best revenge okay um Disdain things you cannot have. Ignoring them is the best revenge. So this means if you can't have someone or a man, ignore them. You know, if they try to come in and out and leave the 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 um the back door open and say, Hey, I still love you, but I'm with this person, block them. You know, block them. Because if they can't come in and out, they lose their power. And that really frustrates them. And that's the best revenge. It's like, I've already moved on for you. You have no power over your no more adios. And then you get the power. Okay. Now, if you can't have someone or something, don't even talk about it anymore. Move on. Like That's why I always tell you, move on. You become more powerful when you figure that out. Okay. Law 37, create compelling spectacles. <laughs> um, y'all ever y'all do y'all remember um well there's several movies that have done it where the guy or the girl wants the attention of someone at the bar, so they stage an act like come over there and pretend like you're arguing with me so he can defend my honor, or that I've uh, told you to leave and I now I'm upset, so he's gonna walk over to me. Um Create a compelling spectacle. 
you know, some people on YouTube may have ways to um, get attention on their videos, like dancing around or wearing, you know, the latest fashion or, you know, um, how they act and talk. It's not, it's more of a spectacle to draw people in. You know what I'm saying? Um, so do something that's spectacular to get the attention, to get the power. Yes. Entertainment. Yes. Um, like burst in, some people burst into songs, start singing. I don't know where. And it's like, wow, you sing great. And then everyone's looking at you and like, oh, can you sing this? Can you sing that? Uh, I know some people that do that. <laughs> um, law number 38, think as you like, but behave like others. So a lot of times when women are dating, I say, don't give your opinions too much remain neutral or side with the person temporarily because, you know, like interest, shared interest will get you further. Um, so you can believe something totally different and, and then be like, oh, yes, yes, girl. Yes, I believe totally. And you, you might be saying in your mind, this fool here, but you're gaining power from that group. You're gaining power from this group of people who believe a certain thing while you believe something else. But now you have, you know, their backing or that's how politicians do it. That's how they get their money. They talk about this. They talk about that, but they never commit to anything because they read this book probably or they study this type of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so it's like, oh, yeah, girl, mm -hmm. I totally believe in that. <sighs> okay, law number 39. We're almost done. Stir up waters to catch fish. Yeah, stir up waters to catch fish. Stir up waters to catch fish. This means controversy sells. Controversy brings it in, baby. Controversy brings you. Oh, and if y'all are just coming, I'm not looking at the um, chat right now until the end. So y'all can stop crying. I didn't block you. I know you almost had a heart attack, but no, you are, you are not blocked. Y'all know your world's about to end. Y'all know who I'm talking to. Now that's power. Um, <clears throat> that was pretty powerful right there. Crying in the comments. Anyway. Hi, Sashi. What's up, here? Thank you. Bye, I love you. Bye, bye, baby. Go ahead, go upstairs. <laughs> um, let's go. Think as you like. Oh, wait, we already did that one. Okay, despise the free lunch. The free lunch means if someone offers you something free, remember there's always something attached to it, and you're always being their debt. <clears throat> Unless it's a gift, like, that you've demanded or asked for. But when someone's offering you something free, oh, you know, <clears throat> we have a free one night at the hotel in Vegas if you spend six hours touring our resort in the hot sun, you know, um, or, you know, I'll, would you do this for me? And, you know, I'll do something for you and I'll give you this money and then whatever, whatever. Okay. So someone gives you money and then they bug you every day. Y'all, that's loud. Then they bug you every day for eight years to get that money back. And wait, I thought it was a gift. Or they hold it over your head. Well, I did this for you. You know, well, I gave you this. Or I'm the reason you're this. Or I gave you your first car. Or da, 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 da. Yeah, they will hold it over your head. So unless it's a gift, don't accept it. It's like, that's why you always ask, is this a gift? 
Is this a gift because you think I deserve it? Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> and if they hold it over their head, if they hold it over your head, all you have to say is, well, you know, it was a gift. You didn't have to give that to me. All right. Don't be trying to take no credit. Mm -hmm. Um. Also, when you when people give you stuff free, they expect you to give in return. Even if you don't, they expect it. Well, I gave her all this and she ain't never gave me nothing back uh, because you gave it as a gift. You don't give to receive. I know people teach that, but that's not really true. You never give in order to receive unless it is a strategy like this, you know, but people that know about the 48 laws of power or any type of power um, will not fall for it. Okay. So law number 41, avoid stepping into a great man's shoes. Like don't try to be someone that you cannot live up to. Don't try to copy or emulate someone that you're not even close to. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know how those chicks be on there with all that makeup and blonde weave on, talk about I look like Beyonce, but they don't look anything like Beyonce, not even 1%. Looking like Beyonce, don't do that. You know those guys that say I'm the next Bill Gates, but they still live with their mama at 40? Mm -mm. Okay. So don't try to fill shoes of a great man or great woman. This is, it's not going to work out for you. You're just going to look like you get the crazy chick. Okay. Law number 42, strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Um, if there's, if there's someone who a lot of people follow or a little people follow, it don't matter how big or small their following is or how big or small their fan base is or how big or small their business is. If you cut down the leader, the sheep will scatter basically. So um, now this technique can be used in many different ways. So if you want a man and he's dating several women, all you have to do is bring him down. Then you can go back and get him. You can get all, it's a little shady, but it works. You can bring him down by telling, you know, letting all those women know, oh, I'm pregnant or um, even if it's a lie. Oh, well, he has this, you know, this, this and that, even if it's a lie. Oh, well, you know, this, this and that about him and he's, you know, whatever, whatever. If they believe it, they're gone. You know, um, if they believe it, they're, they do this in the media a lot and it's pretty sad, but it's a power struggle. If, if someone has too much clout, too much power, they won't want to bring them down. If they have too much freedom and they have too much um, control over the masses as far as influence, they want to bring them down. Because at that point, they could tell them anything. And it might not be something that they want them to tell them. You know what I mean? So that's why they try to bring a lot of people down who are already powerful because if you throw some little shade to somebody a celebrity even some of their biggest fans will turn against them if it strikes a personal chord you know um they they play on people's emotions so you know that's how they use that law of power um but you can use it by bringing down your target and then going back to get, get them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next work on the hearts and minds of others. Yes. Work on the hearts and minds of others. So, you know, people's vulnerability. This is how Meghan Markle got Prince Harry. He, she worked on his vulnerabilities and the things that he, she did charity. She already knew she wanted to be in that royal family. She already knew she wanted to marry somebody, you know, super, super paid. You know, she had pictures of herself in front of the palace when she was young. She read books on Princess Di, all the charities that she did. You know, she, she had the goal. She had the end game. And even her friends and relatives who she don't like said that she was very strategic 
and all that the, that she's done. So basically, you need to appeal to people's vulnerability and what they believe in. They will see you as someone like, oh, this is my soulmate. Oh, this is my twin flame. Y'all know how y'all always think people are soulmates and twin flame. Well, when you play on people's minds and hearts and y'all have, oh, she's, you know, she's been doing this. She's the genuine thing. Okay. Yeah. She, she's, she's doing that on purpose because she knows who's going to be watching. She knows what's going to happen. She knows that she's going to, you know, um, pursue a certain thing at one point of her life. So she sets it up from the start, you know, um, even if it was for a totally different reason, if you're going to do that much charity work, it's for a different reason. It's because you plan on being something major. And when people look back upon it and see what you're doing in the background, it just makes you shine brighter. So she already had aspirations to be someone great or someone important. That's why people do charity work in the background. Because anyone can start a charity in their own name and just give money to it. Say, well, I have this kind of charity. But they don't have to actually get out and do the work and, um, you know, have certain things that they want to do unless it's for their come up in the future. Okay. That's why. When you're in high school, it's like, oh, you need to do something to put on your college transcripts because this type of college won't, won't accept you unless you have more, you know, curricular activities, extracurricular activities, or they won't accept you unless you've done some outside work from the school or da da da, da, da. Okay. So you have to make sure that, oh, this school uh, really appreciates people that um, do charity work with this type of thing. So if you want this school, you do this charity work, apply, da, da, da. So yes, you're going to have to work on the hearts and minds of others in order to get them to favor you, which gives you power and position. Okay. Even if you're uh, dating someone, you find out what's dear to them and you talk about it. Oh, babe, you know, I know you really like such and such. There's a special on TV tonight. All you got to do is call them, tell them there's a special on TV um, and then be out. Be, oh, she really cares about me and what my interests are. And, oh, she really cares about the same thing. Oh, wow. She might be the one, you know. So there you have it. Law number 44, disarm and infuriate with a mirror effect. If someone is acting a way that you don't like or appreciate, act the exact same way so that they can see themselves. You know, if you're having issues with your um, partner because they're staying out late or not um, doing what they're supposed to be doing, you do the exact same thing. You stay out late and don't do what you're supposed to be doing. You know, if you're um, having issues with friends not calling back, getting back to you or ignoring you, when they call you, do the same thing, you know, and they'll see the error in their ways, which will give you your power back. Okay. Law number 45, we're almost done. Three more. Okay. Preach the need for change, but never reform too much at once. Okay. Y'all remember Obama? <laughs> And how he had the, you know, how he had everyone talking about change, you know. I like Obama. I'm not really political, but he had a hell of a game. He had a hell of a game. Um, but never reform too much at once. And I do the same thing. You know, we all need to change for the better. We all need to level up. But if I had gone and got plastic surgery, liposuction, um, all this kind of crap and came back in two weeks and looked 10 times better, you know, people would be upset. They would be like, I thought you, you know, we was trying, I can't do that. You know, then they would give up and you would lose, you know, you know, you would lose people saying, oh, well, I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe level in leveling up anymore because she just went 
under the knife and came back in two weeks and, you know, three weeks or a month. And I'm, it's going to take me some years, you know. So if you're going to do something and talk about change, you're supposed to be changing as well. But you don't do it too fast because then it's not believable. You know, it's like you are already that you were just holding back on us. You know what I'm saying? So it takes away your um, it takes away your influence and influence is power. OK, next. And oh, how to apply this to a man? Um, so if you're in a relationship with someone and they want you to do certain things and you're not comfortable with them. Or you want them to do certain things and you want them to change. Um, or something like that, you start changing as well. But slowly so that they can see they don't have to change overnight. You know, uh, I know a lot of ladies um, might be married or something or in a relationship with a man. They want to make more money. OK, so if you uh, say, well, I'm going to start my own business online. It may em encourage them or influence them to do something similar or get more money. But. They might take their time, but at least they're still on that path, you know, so doing those type of things, saying we need to do better or you, you know, not. I wouldn't say you, I would say we that way he doesn't think he's alone when he really is. We need to do better. So um, I'm going to start by, you know, maybe starting an online business, you know, um, and trying to do something that way. And then they'll figure out what they need to do in order to also improve themselves. But if you're just telling someone what to do all the time and you're not doing anything and you're not changing either, they feel, I don't need to change either. You ain't doing nothing. So I always say lead by example and others will not feel like you're telling them what to do. That was my own little two cents added to that law. Okay. So the next law, law 46, never appear too perfect never appear too perfect. Like I tell you guys all my flaws. I, I did my confession. That way no one has any power over you because you already said I'm not perfect and I don't want to be perfect. And if you thought I thought I was perfect, surprise. I like the imperfections because nobody is perfect. And that just shows people that they can also do those things, those same things too, and get to certain levels too, without being perfect. It just gives you more power. So never claim perfection because as soon as somebody finds something about you that's not perfect, they're going to try to exploit you if you value your perfect image. Okay. And then when that perfect image is ruined, you're ruined. Oh, ah, ha, 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 she got caught. Or ah, ha, ha, he's not perfect. Duh, I never said I was, and I never never will be, and I don't want to be perfect. You shouldn't want to be perfect either. You should, <laughs> you should be perfectly strategic, but that's about it. Okay, be perfectly strategic, but never be per perfect. Never be ashamed of anything that you've done. This will give you even more power. You know why? Because no one can bring anything against you. You'd be like, oh, so and street cred. So, and I'm a player. So, and don't be mad. Hate the player. Hate, don't hate the game. No, don't hate the player. Hate the game. So, and, you know, they just, they, then they have nothing else to say. You know? <laughs> so, and would. <laughs> you know, I have a lot of YouTube trolls that try to expose things about me. But if it's online, you know, I, you know, you can pay to have stuff removed offline. If I didn't want it there, it wouldn't be there. So anything people find about me online by Googling me, who cares? It's out there for a reason. <laughs> if I post my own video for you to go through strategically with the comb, it's out there for a reason. Now, I don't know what else you're doing with that video, but uh, 
<laughs> I'm sure I can guess. Let's move on. Had to take a little pause, take a little sip. Okay, law 47, do not go past the mark you aimed for in victory. Learn when to stop. If you go too far and you go too fast and you go too much, people are going to start to think that you're overcompensating for something and then you lose your power. If you've already gotten, you know, somebody to commit to you in a relationship or give you a certain thing, don't keep asking for more and more and more to prove their love or their commitment. You got it. Pause. Then wait for a better or appropriate time. If you've won something or won a battle or um, a troll debate, don't keep going on and on and on because now it just looks like you're overcompensating. <clears throat> the last law, assume formlessness. Don't label yourself one thing. Don't say I'm this. Say I'm open-minded. Or I don't really have any, you know, restrictions. I'm limitless. That way people won't be afraid to be themselves in front of you. That way people won't be afraid to open up in front of you, especially if you don't judge. That way people can relate to you because you don't have labels. You know? And that gives you power because more people will come to you if you don't have labels. More people will come to you and ask your advice or want to learn from you if you don't have a label. You know, I could be guru this, um, you know, author, doctor this, you know, um, whatever, whatever. But what would that do? Not drawing everybody, but just a certain amount of people. <laughs> <laughs> so be formless. That means I think even Bruce Lee talked about that. Be water. Water is formless. It only takes the shape of what it is trying to become at that time. Okay. Um, you can use this when dating, you know. Be bubbly when you need to be bubbly. Be mysterious when you need to be mysterious. Be crazy when you need to be crazy. Be mean when you need to be mean. But that does not define you. Okay. <laughs> so those are the 48 laws. Now I can answer questions. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Do, 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 do. You're, you're living in a small city where they don't have a lot of rich areas and men's. Maybe some maybe some cities near, but they are still cheap. What should I do? Um, <clears throat> go for go for the uh, most affluent. Go for the surgeons in your town. Go hang out the hospitals in your town or near the hospitals in the parking lot when the sh the shift changes and the doctors are leaving. Go to the areas where there's courthouses where the uh, attorneys and the judges go for lunch. Use your brain and figure out the richest people in your town and go hang out where they hang out. Okay. Because there's, there's rich people there. You just need to find out where they are. You know, the, the jobs that they have, the high paying jobs, they're all in like certain areas, like medical jobs, uh, law jobs, um, engineering jobs. They're all in one type of area. There's tech centers, uh, technological buildings where all tech companies uh, are. There's uh, certain things like that. So if your town is super small, like in the country, then you need to drive. <laughs> you need to drive out. Um, do you go back to his house on the first date? How long do we? Okay. Um, no. <laughs> and if a guy puts his number in my phone in the club, how long should I wait? To contact him. That was a slick move on his part. 
Um, you should have uh, you should have called him right then and there when he put the phone number in so he could get your phone number. OK, do that next time. Don't just say you lost it. Like that was a slick move. Like, oh, you're going to call me. Call him right then and there. So he has your phone number and say, OK, save my number under such and such, whatever my name is. That way now the ball is back in his court to call you. OK. You don't call him. That was his that was his loss. Do you think it's okay to discuss a monthly allowance before the date only if he brings it up? Um, if a man who wants women, I'm a man who wants women to be traditional. Okay. So we're going to pay all her bills because that's traditional. How to be sweet and feminine, but not lose my sarcastic and witty personality and not come off as harsh. Um, you have to, you do, you have to be nice, nasty. <laughs> Study how Southern women are. They will give you a sarcastic diss and you might think it's a compliment for about two minutes. <laughs> then you'll be like, wait a minute. I know she, I know she did it. You know, <laughs> study nice, nasty. And I think, I think Southern women are the epitome of witty, charming, and, sar and sarcastic, but in a nice feminine way. Good shows you can watch to study them. Um, <laughs> Heart of Dixie is hilarious with that. Um, yes. That's a good, it's on Netflix. You can learn all those Southern disses in that show. Just that one show. Go, go watch it for just for that reason. <laughs> and it's it, it happens in a small town. So if you are in a small town, it's going to show you how to get your man in a small town. Okay, go watch Heart of Dixie because it's a really small town and they were getting they were getting the guys. <laughs> OK. There you go. What about New York women? We classy. Um, OK, well, here's my thing with New York women. Nothing bad about you guys. But if you're in a big city, you got a lot of competition. So I say go to the outskirts, go to the small towns and focus on those people. And maybe study Stepford Wives or, you know, how women are in the suburbs versus the city, you know. Remember, one of the 48 laws of power is like recreate yourself. You know, if you don't look like a typical New Yorker, you will stick out more. You know, you will you will stand out more. You're like, oh, she must be from the suburbs or from the South. She's different. You know, don't try to blend in. Try to stick out. Mm -hmm. How to be nice, nasty. You want that video? <laughs> yes. But until I make that video, y'all go watch The Heart of Dixie. It's hilarious. You might even can find some on YouTube, some clips. Um, if you're trying to attract a certain type of man, then you should be watching it close to what you're asking. Okay. So... These laws can work on in most situations, be it career, relationship, and all those type of things. Um, so just make the best use out the best use out of them that you can, and don't forget them, and don't and um, don't listen to people who preach against them, and recognize them when they're being used on you. Okay. Don't it doesn't matter what people think of you for using them. Remember your end game, your end goal. Okay. Just because someone holds a degree in this and that, but they don't know the laws of power, you know, if they uh, there's lots of people with college degrees that have 
very little power. There's lots of people that want to um, make fun of uneducated people, but they're barely making it themselves, you know. So try not to use your education as something that is going to make you better than others because most of the great geniuses don't have certain degrees. Most of the richest people in the world don't have certain degrees. And the reason that I'm saying that is because it's all mental. It's all strategy. You can be the dumbest box of rocks, but if you have strategy, you will win. I'm trying to tell you. You can you can have a third grade education, but if you have street smarts and game, you will win all day, every day. And especially this day and age, you can pretty much Google anything you need to know. OK, so don't feel bad if you're I have a lot of women asking me, I'm not educated. How do I um, get this dude to like me? Da, da, da. It's like Most of them really don't care. But if you just learn how to speak correct English, smile and understand enough to know what they're talking about, you're good. OK, um, so make sure you don't feel intimidated that you don't have a formal education. Um, there are plenty of people that have made it without formal education and those women or those men who use it to feel better than other people, uh, are probably in debt, have student loans, or still don't have the job that they thought they would have or working for other people and hate their lives or their jobs or careers. You know? So be the person who is not judgmental about education be the person who uses strategy because that's the best education you will ever get is strategy okay even um napoleon hill henry ford all those old dudes from the old days that wrote books way back in the day they say the same thing okay and it still holds true today Men often claim that women don't need game. They are just, they just need to be beautiful. But I think this is not true. Oh, women always need game. <laughs> you said lots of celebrities are high school dropouts. Mm -hmm. How to keep conversation flowing on dates. Let them fill it in because they're supposed to do most of the talking anyway. Just keep asking them questions to make them talk. Okay? Always ask them a question about something that you know they're interested in. <laughs> How do you play a player? Be a better player? Have more strategy? Mm hmm. Where's your man if you're so educated? I don't know if you're talking to me or someone else in the comments. So I don't know what, if you're talking to me. But if you are talking to me, um, I'm married. I've been married for a long time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. They were talking to someone else. Gotcha. Gotcha, girl. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Would... What would you call that? Okay. I think y'all are talking to each other. So Okay, so being able to read and write is important. Education allows you to think critically. Um, well, yeah, most people graduate high school and that's where you learn most of the things that you really need. You know, not um, half the stuff you really don't need. And I don't want to knock education. I'm just saying it's not necessary to get what you really want. Um, a formal education. It's not really necessary to get what you want. Let's take it back to the old days. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci was denied a formal education because his parents weren't married. So he went out into the world and studied nature and how it worked. He studied the laws of nature. He didn't study the laws of man. 
He didn't study the formal thoughts or theories of men. He studied creation. And that's why he was surpassing every peer who had a formal education. So he taught himself he a lot of things. He, you know, went to high school, whatever they did back in them days, but was denied formal education just because his because he had because his mama was a baby mama. I don't know. So you know, it is a good thing to have if you have it. I mean, I have degrees, but I'm not going to sit here and brag on them and say that's why I am where I am today because I don't even use them. Okay, don't use them at all. Only time I use them is to shut up the haters. That's it. And anybody can print out a certificate. Okay. Um, <laughs> right. So y'all don't use those as, don't use having a degree as an added bonus unless those degrees, you plan to use them to pay 50-50 bills. Okay. Or unless you're single and have to provide for yourself, then yes, you can brag on all you want, but, and they're good to have if you can't, you know, survive any other way. And that is your meal ticket. Yes. Brag on them, but don't brag to men about them and don't put other people down because they're not formally educated. Because if you really look back into all the people who are not formally educated, they will out earn and run circles around the formally educated. Just, I'm just putting it out there because they're not trained and programmed. Their mind is still limitless, which is the last law of power. Assume formlessness. Okay. So I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to go and I might start a new stream and maybe another, maybe later tonight. <laughs> okay. I know I'm going to get some crazy people on here talk about education, this, education, that, but it's just the truth. I already just said the facts. You know, you don't have to have a formal education to be successful. And everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. How do you allow yourself to be strategic if you don't dare to, if I don't dare to? That is a question only you can answer. Mm -hmm. um, college is a good place to get a man to be honest. Mm -hmm. Not really. <laughs> I cannot stand players. Oh, my gosh. You know, I almost, and I didn't do it, but I almost decided to start a group for, for women who just want to meet a decent man. They don't have to meet certain criteria. But then I was thinking about it. That would just be going against everything that I stand for. And I would be helping dustiness. And <laughs> I'm not going to do it because people keep asking me to do it. And I'm like, I'll think about it. Nope, can't do it. <laughs> Sorry, I thought about it really seriously. And then I was like, I'm going to be in this group telling people to get money. Then I'm going to be in this group telling people to deal with being broke. I, don't, I can't do it. <laughs> can't do it. So I'm not the person. Sorry, can't help you. Um. You just got off the phone talking about 48 Laws of Power and you log on to YouTube and you see this? Oh, yes. That's cool. Is it safe to always look for a better man or option? Is it safe? Where do you live and who do you live with? <laughs> Hi, Layla. So... I did a video yesterday and it was called, are you cut out for this lifestyle? And it's really good because it teaches you how much in control you really are, but you just don't know. But if you realize it, how you can benefit 
and anything in life. So go check that video out. Okay. And I'm going to end the stream and I'll see y'all on a later time today. I might go back live later on tonight and start a new topic. Bye.